Hello, my dear students. Welcome to the Grade Nine English Language Class of St. Peter's College, Kalamphu, Negambo Branch. So today, I have come up with another simple grammar exercise for you. This comes under Competency Level Four Point Seven. Uses nouns, verbs, adjectives, and adverbs properly. I know you all are very much familiar with these words. So, what are these words? Nouns, verbs, adjectives, and adverbs. We'll see the relationship with these words to the English language. Parts of speech. Here you have another word. Word classes. What are these? Nouns, verbs, pronouns, adjectives, adverbs, prepositions, determiners, and conjunctions. There are eight words. These words are called parts of speech. So, how do these words? Contribute towards the English language. The function of a word class. In English, each and every word which comes in a sentence belongs to a certain word class. It belongs to the parts of speech. For an example, she is a teacher. The word she is a pronoun. Is is a verb. A is a determiner, a teacher. It's a noun. So there are four words in this sentence. Each and every word belongs to a certain word class. Now we have been talking about eight word classes, starting with nouns, and we ended up with conjunctions. So these words belongs to one of those word classes. We have another example for you. A gardener water the rose plant daily. The word the is a determiner, gardener is a noun, water is a verb, the is a determiner, rose is an adjective, plant is a noun, and daily is an adverb. So, children, children, each of these word which comes in this sentence belongs to a certain word class. That is what I need to highlight before I start my next segment. Each and every word. Now we have a couple of words here. Each and every word belongs to a certain word class. Now I told you all in my first slide that there are eight word classes. There are now except those eight, we first we can say the four major word classes. Now we have already eight word classes. Before that, we can categorize the four major word classes: nouns. Verbs, adjectives, and adverbs. These are the four major word classes. Other than that, we have another four. Together with that, we have eight word classes. So, what is this? Now, we were talking about parts of speech. So, here you have some other parts of an animal. Okay, what are these names? Here, the first part, the name tail, a naming word. Here, fur. Paw, claw, mouth, whisker, all are naming certain parts of the animal. This animal consists of different parts. So they are naming these parts separately. Nouns, naming words. So what is a noun? The easiest classification we can give is nouns are naming words. We have names of people, we have names of things, objects, we have animals, persons, so all these are naming words. The things that are there around, we can call them as naming words. Or as we can say, a word that represents a place, a person, thing or an idea. How can this idea be a noun? We'll go ahead. So these nouns can be classified or categorized into various sections. So the first classification is concrete nouns and abstract nouns. There are certain more classifications as well. So first I'm going to highlight concrete nouns and abstract nouns. Concrete nouns. Now you all know about the five senses we have. So concrete nouns, nouns which you can taste, nouns which you can see, you can smell, you can hear, and you can touch. So when you use your five senses, and then you can come up with these concrete nouns. Here I have given some examples as well. Cup, you can hold a cup. 
Okay, you can smell it or you can taste it as well. Then you have a ball, you have the chair, you have keys, all those type of things. You can either touch or you can either feel or you can either hear, smell, see or taste. So these stuff are called concrete nouns. Now we are moving on to abstract nouns. Abstract nouns cannot be seen, cannot be touched, cannot be tasted, heard or smelled. But they can be experienced. So before I explain this, I told you all about an idea. Okay? Nouns can be taken as ideas. Okay? So this is like that. Something that you can experience. You cannot see them. You can't use your five senses when it comes to abstract nouns. So the first categorization, that is abstract nouns and the concrete nouns. Concrete nouns, you can use your five senses to identify the concrete noun. But when it comes to abstract noun, you cannot use your five senses, but it's something that you can experience. So here are some examples for abstract nouns. You get shocked because of a certain situation. You get anger, sadness. Those are something that you feel, something that you experience due to a situation. So these are called abstract nouns. So I have given it together, abstract and concrete nouns. First we'll move to concrete nouns. Concrete nouns, on the other hand, can be detected and felt with our own five senses. But here, abstract nouns are words that refer to entities that we cannot feel with our five senses. So the next classification is common nouns and proper nouns. So what are these common nouns and proper nouns? So if you take the word meaning, if you say common, something that is common. Right? If you say proper, something proper, right? Something regular. Okay, we'll see. Proper nouns and common nouns. A noun is a place, person or a thing. That is the simplest explanation I gave for a noun. So if you say proper noun, you directly say, uh, mention a particular place. You are directly pointing at, at a certain person. For an example, they have given Mrs. Smith. You are specific about the person, about the character. And it is capitalized. Common noun is uh, things that are in common that are in general and they cannot be they not be capitalized now here you have the smart board to be seen so that can be touched and that can be seen common now it's not something specific it's just a board that is commonly to be seen so that is called a common noun so if you say teacher for me then it's a common noun but if you come up with my name my own name then that will be a proper noun and the name of the my, myself should begin with a capital letter. So every time the thing that is to be highlighted is proper noun should begin with a capital letter. If you say river, there are a lot of uh, rivers. Right? Those are common nouns. So if you want to specific, if, if you want to specify a certain river, then that will be, like for an example, uh, river Nile. Uh, river Mahavani, then that should be written in capital letters. If you just uh, take the word river, it will be simply written in simple letters, R-I-V-E-R, -E simple letters. But when it comes to proper noun, river Nile, N should be in capital letters. Now here I have given you some examples. Common nouns, a man, a name is given as Victor. So it's in given in capital letters. Second, a mountain. Mountains, it's in common. Any mountain can be taken. So commonly placed in the environment. So that is given in simple. Here, the word is given in capital letters. Again, ocean is there. Again, the names of the oceans are given in capital letters. Here, every common noun is given in simple letters, while all the proper nouns are given in capital letters. Okay. My next classification is mass nouns and count nouns. We we'll see what it is. Count nouns. You know, when you take the word meaning count, you know what count is. Count nouns are nouns that we can count. They can be more than one of them. Say for an example, if I have five pencils, it's countable. You can count the pencil, one, two, three, four, five. But here, look at this example. Count nouns, a notebook, 
an apple. There's only one object. It's not about the number, but whether you can count or not. Here they have given you only one, a notebook, an apple, and some oranges. Few people, sorry, few pupils. Count numbers. Aside from numbers, now I was talking about pencils, so you can count from 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. But apart from counting, you can use some words to show that they that we can quantify them. Here are the examples, a, and the, some, many, and few. In the example I also have given, a notebook, an apple, some oranges. So these are the words that you can use to show that we can quantify them. Right? Here I have given you some examples for countable nouns. Okay? Right, moving on to mass nouns. Mass nouns are used as uncountable nouns. They cannot be counted. You can call them as uncountable nouns as well. Generally, they do not have plural forms. We do not use numbers to count them. We use counters instead. Let's move on to the example. Bottle of milk. You know milk is an uncountable noun. You can't count milk. One milk, two milk, likewise, you can't count it. But you can use, a, use counters saying bottle of milk. So the mass noun is milk and the counter is bottle. In order to quantify the noun milk, you have used this word bottle. And we move on to the second example, strands of hair. Here you can't count, I have one hair, one, two hairs, three hairs, you can't count it. So that is the mass noun and strands is a book. Uh, is a counter which you have used to count the hair, strands of hair. So you can use counters uh, instead of saying one, two, three, four for mass nouns. Here I have given you a set of examples for mass nouns. This is the end of my presentation about nouns. So hope you enjoyed my video. See you in my next segment. Thank you for your patience. Have a blessed stay at home, my good children. God bless you all.